Well, I'm back again. <clears throat> you know, it's 20 degrees warmer this morning than it has been. But I'm cold because uh, with it warmer outside, the heater doesn't come on in here as much as often. And so I'm sitting here going, Ugh! waiting for it to come on again. But I'm not going to turn up the thermostat. Huh. Excuse me. Uh, because I'll be hot later then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a little tired. It's okay. We we were we worked pretty hard yesterday getting around to our doctor's appointments. We had another round this afternoon, but I slept a little bit late and didn't get up until around seven. But uh yeah, well, I'm feeling pretty good. I can think pretty straight. We'll go ahead and resume our program and hope that we don't have interruptions. But as you know, as uh, as we have to start, man, I may have to start treatment soon. I'm not sure. I'll find out more today. I'll keep you posted. <clears throat> Velda has a good report. She doesn't have to at least go back to endoscopy for 10 years. No polyps, no no cancer, no weird cells, nothing, no bleeding. It's all good for that. Uh, it's as if uh, diverticulitis and some of the other problems had just gone away. We just thank God for that. You continue to pray for her. Of course, she still has emphysema, and there's no cure for emphysema. No known cure. And she does have to be on oxygen all the time, so continue to pray for her. I will find out today some clues about whether my cancer is spreading or not. So we'll know more about me later. We're in the book of Jeremiah chapter 14 and uh, when we were together uh, the day before yesterday I guess it would have been Wednesday uh, we uh, God is explaining telling Jeremiah all the reasons why he's brought this drought upon Judah and the drought, of course, is a fulfillment of one of the curses if they break the covenant of the land. God made a covenant with them in the land, and that is the Mosaic covenant. God made a covenant with them of the land, and that is the Abrahamic covenant. Good morning, Sarah. God bless you. Um, so that is why this judgment, he's been explaining this judgment. They haven't had any rain. The crops are dead. There are no crops. He's, he's, it, it makes it sound like it's a dust bowl, that the stubble is just passing away by the wind in the wilderness, um, you know, like a tumbleweed rolling around, and that the land is parched, and it's, uh, it's just... They're not good, not fit for man or beast. The livestock are perishing. Now, even the wild asses are crying at the sky and begging God to send rain. And I, he was talking about donkeys, by the way. <clears throat> Around here, when wild asses bray, it's politicians. that are. <laughs> that's a reference to our current uh, political situation. As the wild asses bray as it were. Um, we'll just pick up one of the main reasons that uh, that God was judging them in this way is because the prophets are lying to them. The prophets and the priests are lying to the people just like our prophets and priests are lying to us today. And so there are so many similarities that it's just crazy the way it works. It says that uh, 
let's back up a little bit so we can explain what the situation is. In verse 13 of chapter 14, Then said I, Jeremiah, O Lord, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine. But I will give you assured peace in this place. Of course, they're lying. Because Nebuchadnezzar is already occupying the country, and a puppet king sits on the throne in Jerusalem. Jehoiakim. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, the deceit of their heart. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not, yet they say, Sword and famine shall not be in the land. By the sword and the famine shall those prophets be consumed. Good morning, Rick. I'm glad you're with us this morning. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out into the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness out upon them. This is pretty frightening, guys. The prophets and priests are lying to the people, saying that they're going to have peace, and they're not going to have peace. Ten years before, under good King Josiah, their lie was, God will not destroy the temple, because that's where his name is. And the people believe the lie. Now he's saying, the prophets are saying, you won't see a sword, you'll have peace. This is crazy. You had... An Egyptian puppet king in Jehoiachin, Nebuchadnezzar removed, uh, the, they removed him, and Nebuchadnezzar set Jehoiakim on the throne, who's a puppet king paying tribute. And then the end, here at the end of Jehoiakim's reign, and, and Zedekiah is the king, the next puppet king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar got mad at Jehoiakim because he wouldn't wouldn't robbing the people of their gold and sending it to Babylon fast enough. Chris, good morning. And so the prophets and the priests, the preachers, they were trying to calm the people down by telling them that there was peace when there's obviously no peace. And so what God is telling Jeremiah is that the priest and the prophets are going to be slain by the sword because they said there wouldn't be a sword. And the, the rest would be slain by famine because they said there wasn't going to be a famine. And then what's worse, guys, is that the people who believed those false prophets and priests and preachers, the people who believed them, God was going to destroy them too. Because they were stupid enough to believe the lie. You gotta you gotta look at this. We're all flesh. We are all stupid enough to believe the lie. It is only by the hand of God and by the word of God that we can see through the BS and see clear. Not only the false prophets are given over to the sword and the famine. But everybody who follows them, their followers go down too. There's an old saying, if you when you when you kill the king, you better be sure he's dead. The people who were prophesying falsely and the people who followed them, they were in rebellion against a king they could not kill, <laughs> the Lord God. The rebellion against God can end only one way. When you rebel against God, this is what happens to you.
in chapter 19 of Revelation, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which, this is at the, at the end of the battle of Armageddon, while they're still on the field soaked with blood. And the beast, and it will happen not that far from now. It's at least seven years from now, but it's not going to be much more than that because Jesus is coming for his church any minute. The rapture is coming soon. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. And these both were cast alive into a fire, burning with brimstone. Verse chapter 20, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up that he should not, and put a seal on him, that he should not deceive the nations till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. In verse 7, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go forth to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven, came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And this is the devil's fate. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, are, not were. They've already been there a thousand years, and they're still there. And she'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw the great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. This is the little risen Christ. All judgment is given to the Son. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. This is all the wicked dead, the unsaved dead. Your good friends, my good friends, good people. God bless you, Charlie. Good morning. But they have not bowed the knee to Christ. They went into eternity without Jesus there's no hope for him. none at all and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, that is the Lamb's book of life slain from the foundation of the word. World. Those who have trusted Christ, their name was written in the book of life. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see, not only will Satan be thrown into the lake of fire, but everyone who's ever followed him will go into the lake of fire. There are no exceptions. And they'll be punished day and night forever and ever. The smoke of their torment goeth up forever. Hell, fire, where their worm dieth not, and their fire is not quenched. Jesus said, fear not him that can kill the body. Yea, Rather fear him who that after he hath killed the body hath power to cast both body and soul 
into hell. So just like not only the devil, not only the beast and the false prophet from the tribulation, kind of a false trinity, a copycat evil trinity, emulating and imitating and counterfeiting the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost on earth. Just like the beast, the false prophet, and Satan, the devil himself, will be cast into the lake of fire, so will everybody be whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? It doesn't matter if you go to church. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized. It doesn't matter if you went to Sunday school. It doesn't matter if you taught Sunday school. Is you or is you not one of his? Uh in uh, that, that 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 hilarious movie, uh, "Old Brother, Where Art Thou?" You had that Ku Klux Klan leading guy, that town uh, politician that was running for governor, and he said, "Is you or is you ain't my constituents?" Well, that's the question Jesus says: "Is you or is you ain't my servants? You either are, or you aren't." You either belong to him or you don't. That's how it's decided, friends. You need to belong to him today because just like the prophecy here that Jeremiah's given, God is saying, I'm not only going to kill the people who deceived you, I'm going to kill all the people they deceived. They will be guilty too because they followed the devil, they followed the false, they followed the faith, they followed other gods, they believed the lies. They followed other gods, they worshiped other gods, they believed the lies. Remember, these are the three reasons God is judging Judah. Those three reasons are why he's judging us right now. They went a whoring after other gods, they're 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 <laughs> committing the sin of idolatry. He said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, they did. And they loved it. And they worshipped their gods. But the, and the, and, the, and the, the biggest form of their worship was that they were sacrificing their children to Molech and Baal and Ashtaroth. They were sacrificing their children. And then we, I've talked about, of course, how many ways there are to sacrifice your children besides killing them. And the third is that they believe the lies of the prophets. Don't believe the lies. Do not believe them. Because if you believe the lies of the false prophets, and if you follow the false prophets, and they could, don't have to be just religious prophets. Shelley, good morning. They don't have to be just religious prophets. They could be political prophets, social prophets. It covers the whole gamut. We think about just religious life. But see, they were being lied to by everybody. They were being lied to by their priests, by their prophets, by their princes, by the ruling class, by the king, by the king in his court. They were all deceiving the people and deceiving themselves because the devil had deceived them. And when they deceived the people, the people had to pay the same price of destruction that the leaders paid. Doesn't have, just have to do with their religion. No. But that was the, the core of it, you see. The abandonment of God affects every area of society. If you abandon God, children don't know who their daddies are. If you abandon God, Sexual perversion runs rampant. If you abandon God, not only can you not tell the men from the women, the men and the women can't tell whether they're men or women. It's confusion. It's madness. When you abandon God, you destroy your children, you destroy your families. When you abandon God, you sacrifice your children to abortion and to society and to madness and to the prevailing politics of the age. 
you don't have to kill your child or, or abort your baby to sacrifice your child. There are many other ways. And you believe lies. When you believe lies, you destroy all the fabric. It's, if you abandon God, you have no measure of truth. You have no standard. There's no light in you. So if there's no light in you, you can't see anything. So he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you're not in his marvelous light, you're sitting in the dark. You can't see in the dark. And you're subject to any lie because they can say, hey, the light's over here. Hey, the food's over here. Hey, the water's over here. But you can't see it. And you have to believe them and they're lying to you. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. You come to him, he turns the lights on. And then it's just like when you're in Houston and you turn a light on in the kitchen at three o'clock in the morning, the cockroaches scatter. Jesus turns the light on your life and sin scatters. The devil flees. His demons flee from you. His claims on you are finished. Jesus destroys Satan's claim on you. You can't do, you know, the Nuremberg trials <laughs> established the principle that I was just following orders is no excuse because they hanged the ones who were just following orders the same as they hanged the ones giving the orders, especially in the death camps. There, no reprieve and no difference between the one who led and the one who followed. When you follow, it's your fault. The rise and fall of Germany in the 1930s and 40s proves that. You know, the Thousand Year Reich that only lasted for 13 years, <laughs> less than 13 years, it proves that the follower is as guilty as the leader. I was just following orders. There's no excuse. That was established forever by the Nuremberg trials and the deaths of the devils in their death head uniforms. The other day, verse 17, Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, God is telling Jeremiah, Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach. with a very grievous blow. And if I go forth into the field, Jeremiah is saying to God now, then behold the slain with the sword. If I entered into the city, then behold them that are sick with the famine. Yea, behold, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land they know not. Jeremiah is seeing the vision that God has described to him as if it's already happened right then. It hadn't happened yet, but it's going to. Verse 19. I thought that I would have made more progress today, but maybe I needed to catch me up. I think I've been preaching a little more than teaching today. It's hard for me to tell. You know, some people say that I'm a teaching preacher, and some people say I'm a preaching teacher. I don't know the difference because I'll just jump off and do one or the other whenever... Uh, <clears throat> Spirit moves me, so to speak. Oh, that's good. Anyway, if you don't believe in God, take another sip of coffee and see if you don't feel like thanking God that you got it. Only God could create something so wonderful. It comes out of the ground. They pick the beans. Oh, Juan Valdez, he's got his donkey up there in the mountains. And remember, was it Folgers? It's the best coffee because it's mountain grown. I always thought that was hilarious when I got a little older because all coffee is mountain grown. You, you, you can't grow it down in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> 
And I call this Baptist gasoline. Keeps me going. If the doctor tells me I got to quit coffee, I'll just have to change doctors. You see, that's a very real possibility because my problem may extend to my kidneys. I've had bladder cancer before, and they're checking that out today to see if it's back again. I've got some unexplainable. Uh, well, I don't want to go into detail, but they suspect some things have gone beyond where they were. And so we got to do some tests. But uh, I guess if they tell me to drink, not to drink coffee anymore, I'll just have to find me another doctor because <laughs> I don't think we have to put up with that kind of negativity in this life. Besides, if I got to live through all this, I want to be awake for whatever happens next. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? This is Jeremiah talking to God. Have, have you completely knocked us aside, pushed us away? <laughs> Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Jeremiah knows better than this, but he's flesh and he's hurting and he sees what God is doing to the people. He's living through the current drought. He's living through the current famine. The only thing that has not come upon Jerusalem yet is the sword. Well, if God predicted all this other stuff was going to happen and it's going to happen and it's, it's happening now, then the sword and the army and the occupation and the captivity, that's all going to happen too. And Jeremiah knows it. You know, they call him the weeping prophet. He had a lot of reason to weep. <laughs> Hast thou utterly rejected Judah, Jeremiah? As the Lord, hath thy soul loathed Zion? Do you hate us as much, God? You ever talk to God and say, why me? Why do you hate me so much, God? Why are you doing this to me? Or they do something, he does something good for your friend and he doesn't seem to do anything good for you that day. And you say, hey, who am I? You know, what am I, a chopped liver? <laughs> Why can't I have a blessing today? I need a blessing too. I'm over here. See me? I'm right here. I quit thinking like that a long time ago. I think I heard David Jeremiah say this first time. I'll give him credit if it's his line, but I don't actually remember whose line it was. It's not mine. But it's just, I'm convinced that whatever God does to me or through me or with me will do me the most good and give him the most glory. That's the way you got to look at it. Whatever is going on with you, that's because that's the way God wants it to be. Do I understand? No. But that's what the Bible teaches. And I believe the word of God. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? And there is no healing for us. Jeremiah knows why. It's because of their sin. Jeremiah has been preaching about why. But he is just a man. And he is a man who is crippled in spirit just like any other man. Not only is, is he going through all this, he has no friends. Remember, he's an outcast. People are trying to kill him. They've already The people in his hometown have already taken away his house, his land, all of his father's heritage, and his sweetheart, the gal that he was going to marry. They took her away, too, and gave her to somebody else. He has no friends, <laughs> or at least so far we haven't met any of them. Now, later on, we will meet some people who are friends of Jeremiah. We looked for peace, and there's no peace. For a time of healing, and behold, trouble. 
Remember the third line. Remember the second line. The prophets prophesied peace, peace, but there was no peace. Jeremiah is saying that they've looked for peace, but there is no peace. Why were they looking for peace? Because their prophets, their priests, their their princes, their ruling class, the king's court, the wicked King Jehoiakim, now the 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 semi wicked King Zedekiah. They keep saying the same thing. Everything's going to be all right if we just keep giving Babylon whatever they want. They'll leave us alone, and they're invading the country. There is no peace. We look for a time of healing. <laughs> we look for peace, and there's no good. <laughs> nope, not good for us. And for a time of healing, and behold, trouble. All we behold is trouble. All you behold is trouble. All we see is trouble all the way around us. My friends, you got trouble right here in River City with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Do -do 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 -do. <clears throat> but I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. Yeah, well, we got trouble. We got the same trouble Judah had. We've abandoned God. See, people talking to people in my churches, our churches, Christians, they've gone off into this deal about they want to make society a better place. Well, you know, you can do that all you want to, but you only make this world a better place to go to hell from. Listen, Christian, it's not up to you to reform society. You can't. It's not up to you to build a kingdom. You can't. We're not kingdom builders. We're soul winners. Jesus will establish his kingdom when he comes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We pray for that kingdom to come, and it's coming soon, baby. No, they I say frio. Loosely translated, that means and it don't matter to me. I, I think if, I think what it actually says is it doesn't matter if it's cold, but uh, the slam slang terms it means uh, well, hey, it don't matter, no big deal. We got trouble no matter where you look. The only healing is in the Lord God. He says that there's, Scripture says there's healings in his wings. The only solution to our trouble is Jesus. The only answer to our problem is Jesus. And the only one who knows more than you believe you know is Jesus. You tired of stupid people? You tired of people telling you one thing and then another person telling you something else and another person telling you something else and they all turn out to be equally wrong in one way or the other. There's only one person who's not wrong. And that is the Son of God. You can turn to him, you can get your answers. You turn to him, you can get your you can get your advice. You can get your counsel. You can trust him. He'll never lie to you. He'll never do you wrong. He'll never set you aside. Oh, but Jimmy, isn't God setting aside Judah? Yes, yeah, an extended time out. We'll learn as we study the chat, the, the book of Jeremiah, that the reason, one of the main reasons he's setting them aside is because they have not given the land its Sabbaths. 
for 490 years. Every seventh year, they were supposed to let the land go fallow so that the land could have a Sabbath and that it could rest. But just like Americans in the Midwest and what became the Dust Bowl, after the greatest uh, production of wheat and corn in the history of the world, it became a desert too for a long time. They used it up. Well, the Israelites were bound by covenant, the Mosaic covenant in the Levitical law to let the land rest every seven years. I'll explain this in full when we get there. 490 years, 190 years divided by seven is 70. And he explains to them that they would be in captivity in Babylon and the country would be under occupation by the Babylonians. And he doesn't explain this, but later by the Medes and the Persians. For 70 years. And then after 70 years, they'd be able to come home. And a lot of them did. But they were still a minority. That's why the Jewish population is spread throughout the world. Even at the time of Simon Peter, 600 years plus after this, there was still a large Jewish community in Babylon. If you look for peace and there's no good, the only place you can turn is to Christ. If you look for healing and all you got is trouble, the only place you can turn is to Christ. If you haven't tried it, give it a whirl. You can taste his goodness and you can taste the Lord and know that he is good. That's in Psalm 34, maybe. You know, I'm never good with numbers. I never have been. But when you read some things over and over, you kind of get an idea for where they were. Chapter Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He let you try him out. <laughs> he has enough grace to give to give you that shot. If you're unwilling to take the step, he'll give you a little bit and say, come on, I got more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman or child that trusteth in him. I apologize for missing a day. I understand, and I don't want it to be this way, but I understand that there will be days in the future that I will miss. But I will remain faithful to this, and when I'm able to do a program in the morning, I'll do it. I know we, with all the backtracking and the preaching, we only got through one verse, but if the good, the good Lord willing and the church don't rise, I'll be here tomorrow. God bless you.